Welcome. This video will walk you through best practices when creating a new customer record. So the difference between a poor customer record and a great customer record is going to be the attention paid to establishing some of that default information. So any default information we establish will flow into other areas of enterprise, like orders, assignments, and invoices. So as long as our defaults are correct on our customer, life will be easy. A lot of these defaults can actually be established when you are creating that brand new customer record. The first one I want to talk about is the department name. So this may be defined by customer terminology, invoicing, or worker comp codes. So example, you likely would not have welders and data entry clerks sharing the same worker comp code, so they probably shouldn't be sharing the same department either. The benefit of creating different departments is it allows users to create an organizational chart for the customer and track business by department. So which departments are most profitable? Which departments aren't profitable? What do we have high and low order fill ratios for? So we'll go ahead and do our... Now by default, any new customer will have the default department of primary. Think of this as the corporate level of information. So for now I'm going to leave that as is. This is where I'll have the corporate address, corporate phone number, and email address. The other important information we can set up when we're creating our new customer is our worksite information. Any brand new customer's worksite is going to be the main address that is entered in here. I'm going to begin by keying in the zip code. As you see when I key that in, cities automatically populate down. Also included in here are any jurises, like a city juris, a school juris, NR, state unemployment information. So what you're able to see is that TempWorks tax tables are in fact tied to our zip code. So again, as long as the work site is correct for our customer, our work sites will also be correct on the orders, assignments, invoices. Key in some street information as well. The third default information that we can set up when we're creating our new customer record is the worker comp code. So whatever worker comp code is established here will be the worker comp code that automatically defaults into any orders that we create. This allows your reports like the worker comp breakout report and worker comp summary to be accurate when you're running that by worker comp code. By having our default accurate here again it also really decreases the odds of somebody choosing an incorrect worker comp code when it comes to creating an order. By having an accurate account manager and sales team you're going to be able to run searches to see the customers associated with each account manager or sales team. You are also able to run reports to see the gross profit produced by each account manager or sales team. So this can be great when establishing how much each account manager or sales team is actually producing. Certainly useful in that commission by rep report or commission by sales team report as well. Our branch is also listed right here as we see. So this is the office that works with this customer. Which of your offices services this customer? Certainly again useful for searching and reporting parameters. For example, how many customers do we have billing in our Memphis Southeast branch? And finally, last one I want to mention in here is our invoice terms. So keep in mind that this is going to determine how an invoice is going to age in your system and when an invoice would be considered overdue. So this ensures that your invoice aging reports are going to be accurate. So we'll go ahead and save. There are additional items that can be set up in the details page of the customer record, and that's exactly where we are right now. So first of all, what I want to mention is the customer status. Now anytime you make a new customer, that status will default to prospect. This is a great tool for any account managers or sales executives because it allows you to organize and report on what the status is of each customer. So I could run a report as a sales rep to see how many current clients do I have that are considered prospects or who am I sourcing, who are my targets, how many active clients do I have. By default, TempWorks will automatically update the status of any client from prospect to hold for credit check the first time an order is created for this customer. Another item I would like to talk about is the interest codes we can create for our customers. So these are going to be the scan standard skills and qualifications that the customer looks for when hiring new employees. So potentially that Brooke Candles always looks for people that are able to work second shift uh, and maybe those that have been five panel drug tested and that's going to be required. They have to be five panel drug tested. So 
If I were to ever attempt to assign an employee that did not have the five panel drug tested interest code saved to their record, I would receive a soft stop, one of those assignment restrictions, warning me about creating that assignment. Uh, maybe they also have to have experience working in a warehouse. We'll go ahead and save. Now, any order I create for this customer, our interest codes will automatically flow into that order. Last thing I want to take a look at here on our customer record is in our defaults area. So who would have thought that during our defaults training, we would want to talk about defaults that we could set up on that customer record, right? But there are some great things we can set up here. For one, multiplier codes. If you have a contract signed with this customer where you agree to a certain markup, you can save that in here so that any orders you create will have that code automatically populate into that order. So this again decreases the risk of calculating incorrect rates on orders. So we'll say for instance that we signed a contract that we agreed to 1.3456. Then we go ahead and save. Now you'll see we have our default set by the system here and also a default set by the customer. This is because any new customer will always have these system defaults in there. That is our software default, if you will. Now that I've added in a specific customer default, when I go ahead and save, it's going to override our system default, and this will be my code to select from on any new orders that we create. Keep in mind that as users, you are able to customize your own dropdown simply by going into the administration section of Enterprise right down here. So if you do not have access to that administration section, go ahead and speak with one of your managers. Um, they likely have access and do have the ability to customize any of those drop downs. So both interest codes and multiplier codes can be customized uh, to fit your needs. Last thing I want to talk about here is the ability to customize any shifts. So again, we have our system shifts. This tells me that this is the software default. But if I wanted to note that Brook Candles has an a shift and a B shift, I could go ahead and add those in right here. So anytime somebody works at Brook Candles, they may either work the A shift, which starts at, we'll say, 6 a.m. and goes to 3 p.m. I could even note number breaks and also the days that they work. And then if I also want to add a B shift, I'll just click to save and add new and key in the B shift as well. So we'll say our second shift starts at 2.30 p.m. We can change that right here and goes until, we'll say, 10.30 p.m. Again, because I've now added customer-specific shifts, when I go ahead and save, that overrides our system defaults. When I create my new order, we're going to see all of the defaults that I've spent the time to create pay off. So I'll go ahead and finish. In my new order, here's my worksite, which was created at the very beginning. We also see our worker comp code has automatically come in. Again, that default was established when we were creating our brand new customer record. Our shift has automatically changed or populated its drop down as well. We now see our A shift and B shift Monday through Friday. My multiplier code is available for me right here. So as soon as I key in the pay rate, the bill rate automatically calculates for me. My sales team is listed as well, so all profits will be associated with that sales team. And when I go into my interest codes area, sure enough, there we see my interest codes for the second shift, five pound drug tested and warehouse. So as you see, it decreases the ability to make any errors or changes and makes that order setup process very easy. Thank you guys so much.